Okay, well, thanks for the opportunity to speak. Um, my topic is going to be developing archival standards. Uh, in Canada, that means saying a bit about uh, RAD, the Rules for Archival Description. First chapters of RAD were published in 1990, 1990, so almost 25 years now. So what does our standard become? Where should it be going? <laughs> um, seven minutes, zero slides, three basic points I want to make. I'll try to keep it pretty quick because I know everyone's hungry. Um, to start with a basic observation, for Canadian archivists, I think RAD is more than just a manual description. Uh, RAD wasn't the work of one or two individuals. It wasn't the work of one or two institutions or committees. Uh, drafting RAD, learning RAD, implementing RAD have been very much uh, a national collaborative venture. Um, drew in the archival community from top to bottom, sometimes traumatically so, perhaps. So RAD was itself the product of our national network and it in turn invigorated that network, gave it a kind of common language and a kind of missionary zeal. So if today, though, that network is in a bit of a crisis, I think at the same time we should recognize that the standard itself has been kind of languishing for some time now. So if we're looking at renovating the one, we should look at renewing the other. Um, so what's changed last 25 years since 1990? Just make a few quick points. Uh, for one, international descriptive standards today exist where they didn't before. So the archival world was very much, I think, inspired by RAD. Uh, they followed Canada's lead, but they didn't do that by adopting RAD. They used our, our experience, I think, to springboard sort of to something different, to transition to something else, which was the uh, standards developed in the 1990s under the sort of leadership of the International uh, Council on Archives, the ICA. So I'm thinking here in particular of ISIG, a standard for describing records, ISAR, CPF, a standard for describing records creators. Canadians were involved in that process. Uh, two of the giants of Canadian description, Hugo Stibbe, Ken Haworth, were key players in that, and they ensured the best elements of RAD made it into those new standards. But much was jettisoned, and the whole was transformed. So does that really matter? Are the differences particularly significant? You say potato, I say I said, gee, who cares? But <laughs> I think it does matter, because in virtually every other archival jurisdiction today, uh, the ICA standards form the starting point. Uh, they're the starting point for the discussion, for new ideas about description, for new practices, for new software. And in a sense, in Canada, we're still back here, kind of just talking to ourselves with respect to descriptive standards. So uh, we haven't made the transition, um, and the result is our standard is stagnating, I think. So renewal, I think, first and foremost, means aligning with the international standards. And there may not be as daunting because there's a fair bit of work done on that, 2001, 2004, the whole project to sort of rewrite RAD as RAD2. That was never finalized, but it's work we could pick up on again. Second point I want to make, the world's gone digital. We've been talking about that today. Um, everyone knew in the late 1980s when RAD was being drafted that electronic records are coming, they're coming. They're here now. Um, one of the good things about RAD, I think, is its wealth of categories for physical description at the item level uh, for non-textual media sound recordings, moving images, and so on. Uh, but the problem is they're very much rooted still in an analog world. So what does physical description mean in a digital world where the very same intellectual item can exist and will exist in multiple physical formats um, and digital formats? Perhaps an analog original, multiple digitized access copies, multiple preservation copies over time. I think it's time to take a step back and rethink physical description in a digital age and to take a fresh look at RAD, so-called media chapters, uh, in that light. And I think it's interesting when we look at what happened recently in the librarians' world with they overhauled their own descriptive standard, Anglo-American cataloging rules, which was RAD's starting point and still informs RAD. Um, and that was one of their sort of motivations, separating physical description from intellectual description. I think one of the things we can kind of learn from that and take away from it is that before we plunge into the minutia of rule revision, take a step back and start developing a kind of uh, abstract data model of sorts. What exactly are we trying to describe? For what purposes? What are the logically distinct entities that comprise the descriptive field? Uh, what are their significant attributes in light of the purposes of description? And what are their relationships? For archives, I think those ICA standards have kind of uh, staked out the ground, but there's still plenty of work to be done here, especially if we're trying to integrate physical description. So second point, uh, develop the abstract data models, the conceptual foundation for standards. 
Third point, <clears throat> I'll just maybe try to make quickly. I struck reading um, Tom Nesmith's uh, background paper for this summit, where he was talking about how the archival agenda of the last 40 years has been very much driven inward looking. Build a profession, build <clears throat> institutions. Uh, that's certainly true, I think, for standards. We're almost talking to ourselves. In some ways, maybe that's kind of inevitable in the sense that the standards are driven by uh, some of our own particular concerns. For access, yes, but also preservation, um, administrative and physical control of holdings, legal compliance around copyright, privacy, and so on. But for all that, I think we should, we can and we should recognize that in some ways the archival representation of archival material is just one, it's our own. There are other descriptive communities that have an interest in archival material. Um, <clears throat> they bring to bear their own knowledge, their own expectations on that material. So yes, as archivists, we should carry on building our own descriptive standards around our professional standards. And yes, we should try to improve those. But what about if we stop thinking or don't think about that as the final goal, but instead kind of the first step in building more comprehensive communication systems around archival materials. This could be spaces where all the various uh, descriptive communities can have their own tools. So records creators, record subjects, records users, records preservers. Um, they can have their own tools to circulate and exchange their own ideas and representations. What would that look like? Not really sure, <coughs> um, or how we build it, but I think that's just it. Uh, we need some experimentation along those lines. So just to, so I think I'll end it off there. Just so basically to recap three points, align with international descriptive standards, develop an abstract data model, start imagining communication systems where archival standards-based description is just one node as it were. It's, it's our voice, it's a standards-based voice, but it's one among others. Thanks. Thank you.